The tropics are quiet once again for now, or so it seems, but that probably won't last for too long. In this video, I'm going to show you some areas to watch over the next couple of weeks and why things are unfavorable for tropical storms right now and when things are about to get way more active. But first, if you're new here, feel free to hit that subscribe button for more tropical weather updates. So here's a look at the NHC, and as you can see, the, the seven-day graphical tropical weather outlook shows no tropical cyclone activity expected in the next seven days across the Atlantic. The other day, we had tropical storm Chantal, which formed into a tropical storm over the 4th of July weekend and hit the Carolinas as a decent tropical storm early on Sunday, but then that kind of moved out across the East Coast, bringing in heavy rainfall, of course. But other than that, nothing, nothing happening right now. And then not even anything in the Eastern Pacific. We still have that nothing expected in the next seven days. There were a couple disturbances the other day in the Eastern Pacific, but those have also not so mysteriously faded away as they've moved into cooler waters and there's, there's a lot of unfavorable conditions out there. Here's a look at the GFS model showing that, yeah, there's showers and thunderstorms, just like we saw on the, on the satellite imagery at the beginning of the video. There was, there's shower and thunderstorm activity across a lot of places in the tropics, but nothing really organizing into a, into a tropical cyclone. Here's the current GFS model showing, showing just showers and thunderstorms that are very disorganized, not really becoming anything. Until we get to July 13th, you can start seeing down near Central America, kind of the same place where we've seen several tropical systems forming this season. You can see that starting to get organized into something. And as we take it through the day on, on Sunday, July 13th, so that's going to be next Sunday, and then going into... Next Monday, July 14th, going to July 15th, it's, it really starts to intensify. So we could actually see another tropical system in the eastern Pacific forming up. And then notice what happens. This does actually strengthen pretty significantly on the GFS model all the way into a 970-something millibar Category 2 hurricane, perhaps. It's a very compact, very small system, but definitely intensifies into a hurricane, but notice it's way out in the middle of the eastern Pacific and just kind of continues going west until it just really fizzles out, and it, it it's not going to bring any impacts, not even really to southern Mexico. There is tropical moisture just, just kind of feeding in there, but nothing very significant in terms of impacts for for Mexico or the southeast or the southwestern U.S. There is monsoon activity going to be happening throughout July in the Southwest, but unrelated to this tropical system. So, so nothing in terms of the Eastern Pacific tropical activity. And, and then after that system, pretty much nothing. You see just, just regular tropical rainfall happening along this intertropical convergence zone, but nothing, nothing turning into a significant tropical system. Here's a look at the GFS model for the Atlantic. We could see that you have pretty much no no significant tropical activity right now, of course. But you have this this big ridge across the Atlantic. We have just just some rain happening along this intertropical convergence zone, of course. And then there's there's gonna be rainfall across the east coast of the US. That happening right now and going over the next couple days, that's basically it's gonna stay the same. Then notice notice all that rain across the east coast. That's that's what you want to notice because this this frontal activity really off the east coast of the US is what I'm looking at as an area to watch for tropical development over the next couple of weeks. Because notice what happens. We have this is going into July 14th. We start seeing something happening kind of around the southeastern US, kind of around Florida again. This is how tropical storm Dontal actually formed. Notice that there's actually, it looks like a storm system trying to trying to form kind of in the eastern gulf, kind of around Florida, and it's kind of separated from from the from all that frontal activity. So this could be a, a subtropical or, or tropical area to to watch for the potential to become something. And notice it actually gets a, a low pressure center and and then kind of actually 
moves backwards, kind of going from like Florida going backwards to Texas. And that actually happened with, with Tropical Storm Barry, not this year, but six years ago, Tropical Storm Barry or Hurricane Barry actually in 2019 actually kind of followed a similar path into Louisiana, kind of going going backwards from a convective storm system across the southern U.S. And so that's going to be the thing to watch. And let's just zoom it in really quickly here. You can definitely see heavy rain across Florida. And this is kind of, Chantal was kind of hinted at by models like the GFS, even several days, even a, even a week out, kind of showing this similar similar pattern where you have kind of frontal activity and then something tries to tries to form independently of some leftover frontal activity and you can you can definitely see that happening from this is around the July 15th to the July 18th time frame basically so definitely something to watch there the main development region is not activated just yet but notice there's also another thing to watch. You have noticed that frontal system kind of kind of moves off off the east coast July 13th going to July 14th. And notice what happens. You have a low pressure system separates from the fronts. Notice those fronts are kind of kind of pulling away and then and and breaking down. But then notice a, a low pressure system kind of forms in the middle of that. And this is over and notice all all this area is actually under some very warm sea surface temperatures. We'll get to that in a little bit, but notice that closed low pressure system, and then it actually drifts kind of southwestward, and then it looks like a tropical wave, actually. If you notice, this this really looks like a tropical wave here. It, it looks like it's trying to develop into a tropical system, and notice that actually heads towards the southeastern U.S., going towards the east coast of Florida, perhaps, around July 21st. So, this really starts going around July 15th to July 17th with even even July 18th with starting a low pressure system. And then this really, this is a, a very interesting potential situation here with, with a non-tropical low pressure system that starts looking like a tropical wave, potentially merging with a tropical wave and maybe turning into a tropical system according to the GFS model. The main development region is not activating just yet. You you do have moisture, but still still dry air in place. The Saharan dust is not not that bad actually, though. That's not a huge problem for for tropical activity so far this season. It's just really the moisture's not not turning into anything in, anything big in the main development region. But it probably will as we go into August and September, because that's that's what normally happens. And really, the thing is just just for something to form, it just needs, there's there's a lot of warm water temperatures out there, even at well above average sea surface temperatures. And so it just really depends on the wind shear. That's a, a major thing. Just finding an area where where there's so, some light wind shear, even if it's a small area that a storm is able to form in, that can make a big difference. Looking at the, the wind shear map, you see all this shear really across the Atlantic Right now, even in the Caribbean, really some extreme amounts of wind shear just that would totally destroy anything that, that even moved into that area. But notice going towards that July 14th to July 20th time frame, notice that shear is actually lightening up, especially in this area that's actually opening up for potential tropical activity. That shear is, is backing up and then the shear does return after that. The shear does return, especially across the Caribbean, the main development region, and even the east coast of the U.S., kind of off off the east coast near Bermuda and stuff like that. But but there are going to be windows, even if it's generally unfavorable, there's going to be still some opportunities for tropical formation. Now, here's a look at the GFS ensemble model, and it's it's showing the potential for, for something off the off the Gulf Coast, maybe around that July 18th time frame, it's it's showing something. The ensembles are not really showing a, a a big thing yet, but but there's some slight hints of potential potential activity trying to happen. So just just something to watch and and starting to see 
stuff happening in the in the main development region, but it's it's still the intertropical convergence zone and the tropical waves are still pushed pretty far south. So so that's not not necessarily a a, a big deal just yet, but definitely want to watch as the main development region starts to get more favorable as we head into the the big part of hurricane season, which is definitely August and September. But the areas that we're watching kind of off the east coast of the U.S. and the Gulf Coast, those do line up with this graphic that I created with the July tropical potential main area to watch graphic that I actually, I showed this in a previous video, but here it is again. We have that these areas that I'm looking at for potential tropical activity and and we already had tropical storm Chantal in in that area forming and and then we're looking at the potential for some more stuff happening in there but right now it is it is pretty unfavorable across the Atlantic and the eastern Pacific just just unfavorable across the board we have right now July 7th July 8th unfavorable across especially that Central America region where we were having a lot of stuff forming and kind of moving into the Eastern Pacific. Um, also the Western Atlantic, unfavorable. And then that will continue even going into July 13th. We have unfavorable across the entire Atlantic, basically, and also a lot of the Eastern Pacific. But then going into July 18th, it starts to back off and we start getting some more favorable conditions starting to move into the eastern Pacific and then that starts sliding eastward as we go towards July 23rd. It's pretty favorable across across the western part of the Atlantic actually, even more than the eastern Pacific. And then towards like July 28th, it goes back to neutral. We'll have to see what happens as we go towards August. This part out here definitely changes a lot. Definitely unfavorable right now, but going into that July 23rd kind of time frame, plus or minus a few days, that is that is a time frame that looks pretty favorable for more tropical activity. And what we're seeing actually lines up pretty much with climatology in terms of the level of activity and also the regions that we're looking at for for things happening. We have June, the Gulf, and the East Coast of the U.S. July, the Gulf, and the and off the East Coast of the U.S. According to the the climatology, and even the main development region can see something, but that's that's very light compared to what's happening off the East Coast of the U.S. And then, but then notice it changes like like that as soon as we go into August changes a lot across the main development region very high that's the most activity coming out of there also the east coast of the u.s and the gulf is still still active of course but the main development region really starts kicking in in august and then going into september really kicks off with that main hurricane track with a lot of the major hurricanes following that path as you can see september with a, a lot of that hurricane activity because on the left we're seeing named storms, on the right we're seeing hurricanes on, on this page. But yeah, definitely August and September, the main development region really kicks off. And then October, it actually <laughs> starts shutting down pretty quick. So that's kind of the climatology. But we have the sea surface temperatures are going to put, I think, going to put a different spin on it. As you notice, these well above average sea surface temperatures across the Atlantic, especially around Bermuda, this kind of North Atlantic, kind of North Central Atlantic kind of kind of part, looking at extremely above average sea surface temperatures. This is probably like over five degrees Fahrenheit, warmer than average, maybe even six or seven degrees above average in a lot of places in this kind of north central or northwest central atlantic kind of kind of region and and that's a big deal but notice the main development region and the gulf is is not even that much above average like slightly above average but then also this kind of area of the eastern part of the atlantic is is bringing down below average temperatures so that's that's a very interesting sea surface temperature pattern that's actually the the opposite of of what we were seeing over the over the past several years with actually slightly cooler off the east coast a little bit 
and then very warm, especially even even last year was this dramatically warm eastern part of the Atlantic, and now that's reversed. But looking at the actual sea surface temperatures, even 30 degrees Celsius all the way, this is almost 35 degrees north. You have, of course, the Gulf Stream bringing up those sea surface temperatures over 80 degrees all the way almost to, like, off the coast of, of Massachusetts even kind of thing seeing those very warm sea surface temperatures surging very far to the north versus in the Cape Verde area is actually colder than than out here, like in the North Atlantic, almost at like 40 degrees north. So we're seeing colder temperatures at 15 to 20 degrees north, seeing colder temperatures than at 40 degrees north. That's, that's kind of wild. But, but yeah, looking at some very warm temperatures across this part of the Atlantic and and the Gulf and the Caribbean is warm too but but not not as significantly above average as as this part of the Atlantic that that really stands out and that's kind of going to make it really easy to see some tropical activity here in that subtropical part of the Atlantic and here's a look at the upper ocean heat content or tropical cyclone heat potential kind of showing the same kind of thing. There's a lot of heat content in the Caribbean in the in the southern part of the Gulf. This is where you'd expect. But then notice ocean heat content extending all the way up here. That's that's the very impressive and more unusual kind of thing seeing all of that ocean heat content off the east coast of the US ex extending pretty far north in the Atlantic. So that's a very interesting thing. And, and so even if you have hurricanes that are kind of turning out to sea, they'll probably be able to maintain their strength unless you get a frontal system or more wind shear. If we had, let's say this continues and we're only at July 8th, we still have like two months till the peak of the hurricane season. So at some point we could have some pretty significant hurricanes going following this path that actually has quite a bit of ocean heat content and and they will probably intensify more over here a very interesting thing to see in terms of these sea surface temperatures and the and the heat content definitely a very significant thing to to look at so here's our long range outlook on the hurricane activity from the CFS model we have all our frontal activity off the east coast and that that could try to do something. We have, this is going all the way into July 27th, July July 26th and 27th, we have a, a kind of a, a tropical system that that's trying to develop in the Atlantic. That kind of fades out and it actually follows the ridge away from the Caribbean, away from the US, not really doing anything significant. But then we have, and this is just to show a general idea of what's what the pattern will look like, not not saying that, oh, this is going to be a tropical system right here at this time. This is very far out stuff. So this is this is several weeks out. Just just gives a general idea of the of the general pattern. But but here's going towards August. This is August 5th. You start seeing that main development region heating up with a lot of tropical waves and potential tropical systems really getting ready to start activating the main part of the hurricane season. So that's definitely on the way in, in a few weeks. Definitely a lot of interesting things to, to watch in the tropics, even though there's nothing happening right this, right this minute or even over the next week, necessarily. There's, there are different signals that are, that are pretty important to watch as, as we go forward. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please be sure to hit the like button if you haven't already. Share the video and make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications for more weather updates on the tropics. Thanks for watching. Extreme Weather Zone, out.